Hello, YouTube. <clears throat> Welcome back to my bookcase. So, Claren, um, I've previously done a review of uh, the four Clarens that are sort of widely available in the U.S., but um, I did mention in the Sejus review that there was one that got away, the uh, Claren Casimir. Um, never really, mostly never made it to the, to the U.S. It, it had to be pulled from the shelves um, due to excessive lead. Um, but so, you know, I never got to try it, uh, in, in that form. Hopefully it's going to come back, but not, not at the moment. Um, but I say mostly because there is a Casimir you can buy in the U S it's, it's in New York. Um, but I did have a, a very kind soul on Reddit, send me a little sample in a cognac tube. Um, this is not cognac, thank God. Um, well, I love, I love cognac, but not, you know, not most cognac. Um, this is a Casimir, which has been aged, um, apparently in Buffalo trace barrels. Um, so this was full. I, uh, I've been enjoying it. Um, but now I'm going to use the last of this to do a little review. Um, so I'm going to start off with some notes, neat, add a little water, um, tell you a little bit about the details of this bottling. Um, and then uh, uh, try it again with, with some water in it, um, give you a score. All right, let's try to do this uh, pretty quick. Okay, nose. Okay, um, leading note is actually after dinner mints. Um, not, the, not the sort of red and white ones. I'm talking about the, you know, the um, sort of pastel colored ones and the, the come in those big bowls. That's sort of the main thing. There's a little bit of, um, like actual fresh mint too, but it's almost um, more like it's it's been like muddled um, with with like simple sh uh, sh syrup uh, and, and sugar. Actually, this kind of smells like a mojito, to be honest. Um, uh, a little bit of like ice cream, different ice creams like like Briars, um, kind of mixed together the, the Briars uh, mint chocolate chip with the vanilla. Um, little just a little hint of like kind of smoky brininess to this not very much um something like like a raw broccoli um maybe uh some kind of something about this reminds me of sparkling wine like a very sort of mineral but slightly sweet spark maybe like 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 a cremant de, de, from alsace Something like that. Um, but also, there's there's a little bit of the the uh, the oaky notes too. There's a little bit of cinnamon, a little cardamom in there. Um, not really any clove. Uh, um, a little candied ginger. Let's let's give this a try on the on the palate. Um, actually, you know what this smell? It smells like it, it's it's kind of like a cinnabon. Um, if you um, smothered it in after dinner mints, something like that, and broccoli maybe. Uh, okay, on the palate, sweet, going sour. Um, so, wood spice, so cinnamon, clove. Um, vanilla bean, that kind of thing, but kind of fading into what's that. It, it's like a lime juice, but there's something else. It's, it's almost like, um, like if you, this will sound weird, but if you like oak aged yogurt somehow, like, like oaky yogurt, I, I don't know, that's about the best I can do. Like something like kind of dairy sour. Um, but also the lime juice is, is there too. Um, But the mint is there, very, very prominent. More, more mint leafy now, but also still like, okay, the 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 uh, the red and white mints are here playing now. Um, kind of a menthol note. Uh, there is that minerality, so maybe maybe a little bit of like seawater, you know. Um, not not a lot of you know olives or sort of tomato going on in here. Um, which are the elements I expect in, in Claren. Um, 
it's black pepper, fresh ginger, um, kind of a, like a pear cider, pear-y thing. Um, maybe like, it's not like sweet pears, like, like kind of, um, cider pears. Um, okay. Uh, what's, what's interesting to this, about this is this is not, um, so Clarence in general aren't big boys. They're sort of medium bodied spirits. Um, not like, you know, the stuff you get in Jamaica or, you know, other, other pot distillates. This is, they tend to be, you know, a little bit, a little bit more lean. This is almost thin um, in a lot of ways. And, and the finish is actually quite short. The minty thing kind of sticks around, but everything else, it's kind of like a big burst of, of, um, you know, oaky niceness. And the, the mint kind of comes and stays, but everything else is just kind of fades off. Um, I'm going to give this a squirt of water and tell you some details. Um, there's not very much left in, so I'm going to cut that short. Okay, so what is this? Um, so it's so it's originally from um, the Casimir Distillery um, in Barad. Uh, <laughs> I can't read it. I can't read my notes. But uh, Baraderas, I think, um, which is in the south, sort of southern southwest uh, peninsula on Haiti, pretty close to the Arawak Distillery where 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 um, Vival is made. Um, uh, Master Distiller uh, Faber Casimir, I think he took to, took it over from his dad. Um, uh, this particular batch was, I'm reading my notes, um, distilled in on uh, June uh, 22nd, 2017. It was uh, bottled uh, in April uh, 2019. And in the meantime, it spent some time in a Buffalo Trace cask, number CA16BT-1. Um, like a, you know, early... George Lucas movie. Um, it was selected by a pair of fairly famous bartenders. Uh, we have Jesse Vita and I, uh, uh, Ivy Mix um, from uh, Singapore. Well, they're currently working in Singapore and New York, respectively, but, you know, um, they travel around. <coughs> uh, bottled at 49.7%, which I think is a little bit lower than the standard Casimiras tend to be. Um, and... Uh, yeah, that's about it. I think you can, I think this is, this is exclusive, exclusive to the New York area. So again, I had to you know get it by, by a um, uh, cognac vial, twenty two months old, um, in a Buffalo Trace cask. Uh, um, it's actually kind of appropriate that it's a VS vial because VS, of course, as you know, starts at two years. So this is pretty close to that. Um, okay, we're gonna go back to it. And then let's have a little chance to, to open up. Okay, there we go. It's open. It's opening up a little bit. Actually, the the yoga's coming out to play more. Um, um, yeah, just classic oak, American oaky notes. You know, the vanilla, the not so much coconut, but you know, definitely some some wood spice, um, pepper. Even um, and also, there's some some dried grass definitely coming out now. The the, the mint's still there, definitely. Um, Balsa wood, um, weirdly enough. Uh, Darjeeling tea, um, very lovely cup of Darjeeling. Um, maybe like just a hint. You just get throw one tiny sun dried tomato in there, but that's really about it. Um, on the palate, um, oh, same thing. The oak comes out to play. So it's a big vanilla, oaky, peppery thing, but then it just disappears. Um, quick finish with the mint um, sticking around, that yogurt thing also sticking around. Um, a little pickle juice too, which is kind of nice. Um, one, more one more shot. Boom. And then it's gone. Um, Yeah, so so score wise, I would give this um, let's say like an eighty five. Let's let's say eighty five minus. That that finish is really bugging me. Um, so it's good. Uh, obviously, obviously, this is the lowest Claren I've scored yet. So so I haven't tried the original Casimir, obviously, and I haven't tried any other 
um, aged uh, Clarins. So I don't really have a lot of, point of points of reference for this, but I mean, when, when you age something, you're getting something, but you're also losing something. And I think in this case, um, the loss has maybe been more severe than, uh, than what was gained. Now, I think um, my tendency is to think that from, from you know, cases like this, the, the nerds are going to sort of take this as an opportunity to say, okay, well, just don't age Claren then. And I, I think that maybe sort of, I, I feel that, but I also kind of feel like, um, you know, uh, maybe that's a step too far. Maybe the lesson should just be um, maybe that you don't get as much uh, from a fresh dip in, um, in sort of fresh American oak, oak um, as you would like. I honestly think like, like this is a little bit, you know, stuck in between. I don't think it's, this will make the nerds, the sort of Claren nerds happy. And I also don't think, you know, the, the, the regular rum folks are going to kind of wonder where the, where the excitement is. Um, I also think if you kept this in the barrel, like you might lose a little bit more of the Claren, but it's already a lot, there's already a lot gone already. And you would start to pick up those heavier oaky notes, which, you know, might, might give this a, a kind of different life, a second life. Um, but that's not really happening yet. Uh, uh, I mean, I think the lesson to take from this is to explore different methods of aging this stuff. I mean, if you're going to do it, I mean, Barbancourt is right there and Barbancourt uses French oak, right? So I think, I think mostly Lemazon, but correct me if, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, so we know there's, there's French oak floating around there already. And I think, um, Claren and French oak would be, you know, a very interesting thing to try. Um, maybe an ex Barbancourt cask or something. Um, but, you know, you can, you can go beyond that. I mean, you can, you can, you know, there's, there's, uh, um, Hungarian oak. You can try that. You can, Russian oak is, is starting to come out of the scene. Um, Slavonian oak. I mean, winemakers have been, you know, wary of American, heavy American oak, um, unless you control it for a long time. Um, and they've been exploring alternative woods for a long time. And, um, you know, I think uh, makers of particularly delicate spirits like Clarence can, can kind of learn from, from that example. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. Um, 85 minus, uh, pretty good, you know, interesting if you, if you want to try it, but, um, you know, not, not my favorite ever. Um, okay. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, cheers.